project before he departed. So I will do my best to present it. Uh, Roger and Paul and Chairman Brady, if I miss something, please feel free to chime in and correct me. But uh, in Tooele City, we have some interesting streets. Uh, we have what they called um, secondary class roads. Uh, some people call them alleys. Um, they are 150 West, uh, 50 West, and Garden Street. And this is a plat, Tool City Plat A, that shows uh, how those streets were going to be laid out and it determined the right of way width of those roads. I don't know when the roads exactly were created or constructed, but this plat was recorded in 1980. So they've been around for a long time. And if we zoom in just a little bit on that plat, you can see that 150 West is designated as a 49 and a half foot right of way. 50 West is designated as a 49 and a half foot right of way. And Garden Street is designated as a 33 foot right of way. The problem is over time, these roads, because they're substandard roads, they haven't received the attention that busier roads receive. And what's happened is property owners have gradually encroached on the right of way. <coughs> the landscaping's moved out a little further or the fencing has moved out a little bit further. And it's just hard to determine the right of way, how, how it exists and where it is. And, and uh, the fire chief, when he came onto the city, began to grow concerned about what happens if there's an emergency that requires them to take a large emergency vehicle back there and if there's two cars parked blocking the way they can't get through or if a truck is back there a fire machine back is back there is there enough room to put the outriggers and support the truck so there's just some concerns there in regards to how we're dealing with those streets another issue that we encounter is when these streets usually front, our, the properties in between these streets have two frontages. And we're getting a lot of requests from people who want to split their lots and, and access one of these secondary class roads. And they always ask, what do I need to do for improvements? Well, we don't really know what to tell them. The city has vacillated both ways. You need to do these improvements, or right now we're telling them you don't have to do any improvements at all. So this is a good time to to look at these roads and determine what we want to do and put it in the code so when people come in and ask, what do I need to do, we can say, here's the code, this is what we're going to do, this is what you need to do for this road. And the fire department and I believe the public works department uh, began a survey of these, of these roads and they determined the right of way widths and uh, how much encroachment has happened on these streets. And, and they put together this table that shows the conditions of the road and, and what kind of improvements need to go there. So if you follow the table, this is for 150 West. So if I wanted to build a house on 150 West that was somewhere between 650 North and 600 North, uh, the existing right-of-way width is about 54 feet. There's an existing width of asphalt that varies. And then there's a requirement under this, this proposal to have 30 feet of asphalt, a curb and gutter, and then sidewalk on the west side. Now the sidewalk requirement varies because if you're familiar with these streets, sometimes there's sidewalk, sometimes there's not. And so you notice on this list that there's some requirements for sidewalk and there's some requirements for, for no sidewalk at all. And that is based upon continuity. So if there's a sidewalk already there, then that stretch needs to continue that sidewalk. And so that's what you're seeing with the not required or on the east side and so forth. So when somebody comes in and wants to build a house in one of those areas with this table, once we have it codified, we can tell them, this is what you need to do when you build your house or when you subdivide your property. And this will, the curb and gutter will help with stormwater management and we'll be flooding properties. Uh, we'll have sufficient asphalt width for emergency vehicles, and uh, the roads will gradually be improved as development occurs. So in your, in your packet, I included the whole, the whole survey that was done by the Public Works Department and the Fire Department, and each chart, it goes to a specific image, and it shows you 
the right of way that's available and you can also see the encroachment that's occurred and so forth. So this, this really is going to apply to new development and probably redevelopment as it occurs. It's not something that you go in there and just tell all the property owners you have to do this, unless I'm wrong on that, Roger, but okay. So it would just be new development and redevelopment. But it gives us a standard to fall upon where right now when people come in, we say, well, you know, build your house on a gravel road. Uh, this is much better and it gives us the ability to get these roads improved in time and, and get these property owners so they know what they need to do. So the ordinance amendment of, is, is proposed for Title IV, no, see Title IV, Chapter 8, uh, Road, Bridge, and Construction Standards. And what we're proposing to do is add a table to that ordinance. Now, Roger, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not going to be this whole table. It'll probably be the section and then the asphalt width, the curb and gutter, and then the sidewalk requirement. Uh, the other things are just based, are based upon the survey that was done. Uh, so it would just be those four columns which pertain to future and uh, redevelopment on those streets. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, that's what we're proposing to do. Uh, we wanna get some comments for, from the Planning Commission before we uh, and a recommendation for the city council. Uh, if you have any questions, I can try and answer those. Roger, Councilman Brady, and Paul. So. Perfect. Let's bring this back to the com commission for any questions. Yeah, I had a question. It, if there's going to be, I mean, I see the sidewalk requirement, but if they're going to have access to this road, isn't there a way that we could require that they also put in the sidewalk and then make that the, the standard? if they're gonna access their property through, say, 50 West? So the, the issue with that is the right-of-way width itself. Mm -hmm. um, these, these, you know, for a, a typical subdivision street, you have 30 feet of asphalt, and then you have the 10 feet on each side, which comes to about 60 feet. There just isn't sufficient right-of-way width to accommodate a sidewalk unless we do a sidewalk and an easement on private property. Uh, uh, that's the biggest issue. We just don't have the right of way with. So. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yep. Okay, great. Any other have a question? Yes, Commissioner Jensen. Maybe a couple. Um, so when you say that like this would come into play during uh, development, and redevelopment. So, like, if somebody wanted to build a garage in their backyard and they weren't splitting their lot, would they have to upgrade the alley behind them? Building an accessory structure wouldn't be considered redevelopment. Redevelopment would be an existing dilapidated structure is removed, and an entirely new structure is constructed on the property. Mm -hmm. um, subdivision is development, so it would, it would be required during subdivision. So, you'd just be looking basically at subdivision or the construction of a new of a new home. Okay. Or commercial development. I, I think it's a good idea, and I, I like the whole idea behind it, but that was something I was concerned about if, because I think, you know, somebody just wanted to build a shop, because we just did one, a uh, conditional use permit for one on 50 West a few months ago on the south yeah. side of town. And, like, that might have stopped that guy from being able to build his garage if that was, you know, yeah. but I completely agree with building a new house or even the change of use, things like that. I just wanted to. Yeah, development would be determined by the main use of the property, not by an accessory use. Okay. Commissioner, there's, there's a state law behind uh, what we're telling you. That is that cities can take uh, land and require improvements from developers only to the extent that those developers are impacting the street that we're making them, the transportation network. So building a garage on an existing house would not increase the impact of that house, that the impact's already there. Okay. So we could not require it for that reason. But building a new house would create new impacts to sidewalk and streets. That's when we can require the improvements. Yeah, well, I've done some work on some other properties in town, newer houses, and um, it was kind of interesting to see that they didn't have to put anything in in the alley that they were at, you know, and I think it would be better for the city as a whole to do this, is my opinion. Good point. Any other questions for staff? All right. 
This one also does require a public hearing. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and open the public hearing now. If you please approach the podium, state your name for the record, and head over to the paper over there and write your name for the record. Nothing to say today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing for this particular item and then bring it back to the commission for further action. Uh, Chairman, I'll make a motion. Commissioner Proctor? I move we forward a positive recommendation to the City Council for the Secondary Road Standards Text Amendment requested by Tola City for the purpose of revising the City Code regarding required improvements to these secondary roads based on the, on the findings in the staff report. I got a motion. Uh, for a positive recommendation from Commissioner Proctor, the chair will go ahead and second that one. Commissioner Proctor, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Newell? Aye. Commissioner Jensen? Aye. I am Chairman Hamilton. I also vote aye. That one passes 4-0. All right, number five on our agenda is a decision on a conceptual con condominium plat proposed by Harris Community Village located at 251 North 1st Street in the R17 Zoning District on 9.35 acres. Mr. Agard. Thank you, commissioners. This is a bit of a unique request. Um, I haven't done a condo plat with the, with Twila City before, so uh, this is the first one for me. The Harris Community Village is proposing a condominium plat. Now, you may be asking, what is a condominium plat? A condominium plat differs from a subdivision plat. You've seen plenty of those. Uh, the big difference is a subdivision plat divides land, so it takes a a parcel of ground and it splits it into smaller lots and those smaller lots can then be sold off developed whatever the owner really wants to do with the property condominium plat is a little different it is still a plat but it does not involve the subdivision of land what it does is it involves the subdivision of space above the land uh, for example if you have a sub uh, an apartment building that is currently rental units and the owner decides they want to sell off the units for private ownership, they would do a condo plat. And what the plat does is it creates private ownership of the interior space above the ground inside the building. And then that space can be sold and, and done what, whatever the owner wants to do with it. Uh, condo plats also create you know, ownership associations to maintain properties around the condos and so forth. But generally, a condo plat is, is all about ownership of interior space. And there are not a lot of zoning issues involved with a condo plat. Uh, this condo plat is proposed by, by the Harris Community Village, and I believe they are here and they can address better why they want to do it. Uh, they are not creating a condo plat that would individually or permit individual ownership of all the units inside the building. Uh, they want to condominiumize the entire interior of the building itself. And they can explain why they want to do that. Uh, the process is a little different with the condo plat. We have to first come to the Planning Commission and get a concept approval, a preliminary approval of what they're proposing. And your staff report included what you can look at in regards to your conceptual review of the, of the condo plat. Uh, what I can tell you is the condo plat is not proposing any changes to the site plan. It's not increasing the number of units in the building. It's not changing the buildings. It's not changing accesses. It's doing nothing to the ground and nothing to the buildings. Uh, according to the applicant, it's really related to financing and, and ownership of, of the interior of the buildings. They can explain that better. Uh, but that's what's being asked here is uh, just condominiumizing those buildings. Uh, nothing's changing on the site plan. And uh, if you have any questions, we can try and answer those for you. All right, we'll bring this back to the commission for questions for staff. I have a few concerns. Uh, just as a, I've been, I work in the title industry, so I'm looking at this, and as this stands, we would not be able to insure any of them with access. Because the condominium plat, as it stands now, doesn't describe any access, and the the actual condominiums sit inside the boundaries of parcel A, and I can see the roads on there, but it doesn't call out the roads, and so therefore, it wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to, you know, as a title insurance person, we wouldn't able to be 
issue a policy, nor would we help cover a sale at any, we'd decline it because there's no access. So those are definitely those are definitely things at this point that we can request of the applicant that they add to the condo plot as it comes through the, the process. Okay. So if that's a concern you, you want to address, now, now's the time to do it. All right. That was my main one, so. And having seen a, a lot of condominium plats over the years, I just think they need to do a little bit more work on this. Um, like on the CRC1, I know that they, I assume that they had intend to include the whole of that strong outlined building, but they do have a line in between the back building and the main building, which would cause some ambiguity. So um, there's that as well. Yeah, that's, that's why we have you reviewing it, so. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we got someone, an expert on here. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for staff? No. I have concerns too, but you've yes. already brought them up and I think if it's the, the people are here, Hopefully they'll address them. So, okay. Yeah, should we call them up and have them address us? If the applicant wants to come up, if you would, please uh, state your name for the record. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Ivan Carroll. I work with GIVE. We're the development consultant for Tooele County Housing Authority that owns Harris Community Village. Deanne was out of town. She couldn't be here. She would be. Um, so yeah, I appreciate the comments. Um, this is, I mean, and on there it's very faded, so you can't see everything that's on the plat itself, plus all the legal, legalese that's on the exterior as well. But yes, any comments that you have regarding making it more accurate, showing exactly what we need, uh, we'd love to hear. Do you want me to explain exactly why we're doing this? Because it's a little weird, and I understand. So uh, this project's funded uh, through federal tax credits, low-income housing tax credits. And Utah Housing Corporation that runs the tax credit program in the state did something really weird last year with their application where they allowed um, a project to receive two allocations. They'd never done that before and this year they switched back. So with, and they did that because construction costs were just skyrocketing and projects weren't working. So this project was allocated two allocations. In going through all the legal paperwork the attorneys that we were working with through, with the lender uh, were under the understanding that we could use one, what they call building identification number, which is what uh, the federal government has a building identification number that tells them where the building is, when it applied for credits, all that. So we were proceeding as if there was one building identification number until Utah Housing said like the day before we were gonna close, we need two building identification numbers. And so we started digging in with the attorneys and with UHC's attorneys, come to find their right. We need, because it's two allocations, we need two building identification numbers, which would require either they be on separate parcels and be different buildings, but where this is what we were already going to be building, uh, the easiest solution was we can condo the two sections, which actually works out from a tax credit perspective because some of the tax credits were going to what's in one wing of the building, the other credits were going to the other wing. So nothing is changing with the project. Uh, like Andrew mentioned, the site isn't changing, the units aren't changing, the ownership isn't changing. We're happy to put whatever we need to in the HOA documents to ensure that things run as the city understands that they're gonna run and as we still are planning on everything running. So it, it's really just a technical requirement by Utah Housing Corporation that needs to have two separate legal buildings to put an individual building identification number on each building. Does that make sense? I think so. So you're, it's just going to be two different condos then. You're not splitting up each individual Correct. room. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and you can kind of see, it's, it's hard to see on there, but basically building one is uh, that north wing building two is what is that the east wing i guess Southeast. yeah and then that l that connects them is just like the lobby and the mail room it's common area 
And then the third condo would be that CRC building, the Community Resource Center building. But all the operations are going to maintain. Tooele County Housing Authority will still be the sole owner of everything. They'll be the only person on the HOA, so they will run everything. All the utilities will still be paid by the, the project as they were going to be previously. So absolutely nothing changes except we now have two technical parcels that we can put two bins on. So, so are in each building, are there going to be individual units? Yes. So in the south wing, that has 24 units, ones and two bedrooms. That north building one section has 42 studio units. And they will forever st remain in the... Yes. Okay. Yeah, and we've, we've chatted with uh, utilities and with Jim before he left, and worked through, because typically condos have different structures, but this is kind of a weird one. So we figured out how to make everything work through the HOA documents. We're happy to record whatever needs to be recorded on the parcels so that it, it functions as it's supposed to function. Permanent support of housing, rental property, and then if it ever changes ownership in the future, they would have, they would have notice on, like you were saying, in the title world, saying this is what was agreed to by the city, happy to do whatever needs to be done there. So as the roads that are drawn on there, <coughs> would they then just be part of the common areas? Correct. Yeah, everything outside of those three buildings, including the L that connects those two buildings, is common area. In your, when you were just talking, you said rental properties. I just heard that. What, what do you mean by rental properties? So this is permanent support of housing, which is essentially housing for the homeless. Um, but it's all apartment buildings that are rented to To people tenants. at a discounted rate or based yeah, on correct. their income or something. Okay. Because yep. so, that was one of my concerns with splitting it up. I thought you were splitting up each individual unit because nope. then some days I feel yeah. like somebody could come in and buy it and then rent it. And we already, if I remember correctly from the last time we saw this, we downsized the parking a little bit because we figured not everybody was going to mm -hmm. have houses. So we made some allowances for some things. And I... You know, I just don't want Correct. it to go back to where there's not going to be enough parking if it gets sold someday and they're all yep. individual rentals. Completely agree. Well, and with the condominium, it has to have the covenant conditions and restrictions that we'll record with it. Mm -hmm. And that can be one of the stipulations that's in there, because I see it all the time, that this property will never be owned as public units or whatever, okay. that it will remain in perpetuity in tool housing. Yeah, and right now it already has a deed restriction on it for 50 years to be affordable housing. Okay. So it can't change what it is for at least 50 years. Yeah. Well, that alleviates all the concerns that I have, yeah. I believe. So. I mean, I, I personally, you know, just from the title aspect, I, I would like to see the, the roads labeled. And yeah. even if they're just named whatever, you know, Brady and Manzioni <laughs> and whatever, and... Uh, <laughs> And just labeled as private roads. Sure. It was just, you know, from just the title guy in me, it would, it would satisfy a lot of... Yeah, and, and I'm happy to, to work with our title company to try to get their thoughts as well on what they see that needs to be fixed. One, mechanism, one mechanism we're accustomed to seeing is what we call cross-access easements, where each parcel gives uh, an access easement to every other parcel. Um, that would, I think, satisfy the title concern. Well, as long as the the access or the right of way is described, and if if it's described, if it's just as, you know, building one will have access over parcel A, but then never says where that access is, it's really ambiguous. Right. Well, these are not going to be public roads, and they're not even private roads. They're just internal circulation. Uh, so I'm not sure that there will be labels. Well, you know, but uh, like one of my main concerns, what happens in 50 years if it decides to go public? Then, then they'd have to either replat the whole thing instead of just maintaining the existing plat. 
Um, they'd have to go through all that process and however much money, whatever, and then have to create those. Right. The access should be created now before the plats with the recorded plat. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be labeled. If it was just drawn in and just says access road, yeah, whatever, that would really satisfy a lot of concerns. Sure, we're happy to do that. Yes, please, Mr. Hansen. <coughs> this is only a concept plat. Um, under Tula City Code, the concept plat for condominiums comes before the Planning Commission and City Council, and it will then come back as a final plat. So we, we've done condominium plats in the past, and you're correct. You need to designate public access, public utilities, stormwater detention, buildings. There will be significant additional detail that will be added to this. I think the intent of tonight's meeting is to simply say, is there objection to creating a condominium of this property with the understanding that all of those items required, required by title and insurance and recorders will still need to be addressed and you will have a second chance to look at all of those things. Well, that helps out. Does that, does that, that help a little bit? perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not the last time this is this will be reviewed. <laughs> okay, perfect. No, that helps out quite a bit. Commissioners, it's interesting that this year the state legislature outlawed concept plans for subdivisions. They're gone um, because no one knew what they really were or what an approval really meant. This, however, is a unique situation where a concept plan is required and is allowed to be required. Our code, though, does make it a formal part of the process. It's not just a drawing. It is, and you are given a list of things to look at with the concept plat. So I think uh, Paul's right and everything else you've talked about is just fine. Um, I was uncertain. I thought the common area was only the connecting hallway and none of the other grounds based on the label I can see. So that ought to be clarified. Well, there, it is over on the uh, left-hand side. It says parcels uh, A and B will be um, our common areas and will be held in the associations. Okay, I did uh, not see that note on here. So there it is. <laughs> good discussion, good information. Any other questions for our applicant here tonight no, I think this is great okay. I appreciate honestly the city has been fantastic from the council the commission staff this project is coming along if you haven't driven by well you probably can't drive by too much with a water line being done but go by and if anybody wants to tour as we're getting closer to end of construction happy to set that up um, through Deanne or her staff happy to take anybody through thank you all right, Mr. Mm -hmm. Carroll, appreciate it. If you would just sign the, the paper over here, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hansen, for the direction. That helps us out quite a bit tonight. Any other questions or comments from the commission? No. All right, I'll entertain a motion on item number five on our agenda. They didn't give us a sample motion to read. So, <laughs> so all we're looking for is just a, a decision, uh, of, and if we approve the, I'll make a motion to the... Yep, to the Commissioner Proctor. Motion to approve the conceptual and have it go forward in the process. I think that would suffice, wouldn't it? I'll second. Okay. Got a motion to approve from Commissioner Proctor and a second from Commissioner Jensen. Commissioner Proctor, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Newell? Aye. Commissioner Jensen? Aye. I am Chairman Hamilton. I also vote aye. That one passes four to zero. Next up on our agenda here is number six, and we got a newcomer here tonight, so our city council reports. Thank you, Chairman, Chairman Hamilton. So in our last meeting on Wednesday, May 3rd, we had quite the agenda, so I'll just try to sum up everything that happened. Uh, one big event was Andrew Agard was officially sworn in as the new Community Development Director, so <laughs> congratulations. You've all worked with him a lot, so we're excited to work with him more on the City Council. Absolutely. Um, another topic that we discussed was we tabled Ordinance 2023-20. That was for the rezoning of the property located on 60 South Main Street from general commercial to the mixed-use general. Um, that's the property that they're discussing putting in a, a resource center. The council decided to table that for two months so that we could discuss it more in depth with the Downtown Alliance. I know Tyson sits on that committee as well. So 
Councilman Hanson will be bringing some information about that and getting the input of the Downtown Alliance. We also, one other item, I don't remember the ordinance. It was this general commercial property located on Garden Street. The council decided not to rezone that, uh, partly because of the discussion you had this evening about the, the secondary streets. We were concerned about the traffic that would be on that road and also that we felt like some items could be appropriate in that general commercial area but opening it up to really anything that could be built in general commercial so the council did not approve that rezone let's see what else we had i don't know if there's anything else we approved the tentative budget for the fiscal year 2023-2024 so we'll be having budget meetings in our next work meeting where we really dive into the budget and discuss how we're going to allocate funds next year. Looks like at the pool they're going to be finishing the concrete. I don't know if you noticed in the front that there hasn't been concrete there for quite a while and that I believe it was being poured tomorrow maybe. I think Darwin had told me. He's not here so I can't ask him but Paul's shaking his head yes. So they prepared that. It's starting to look a lot better and that should be done soon. I think that is all that was really significant. Those two items were the two items that we had quite a bit of discussion on. Is there any questions that you have for the council? Don't need from you guys. I, I appreciate you guys uh, referring to the Downtown Alliance for the stuff that's happening in, in our area. I, I really do appreciate that. So it makes me yeah. feel good. <laughs> that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Councilman Brady. Appreciate that. Number seven on our agenda is a review and approval of planning commission minutes for the meeting held on April 26, 2023. Are there any corrections or additions that need to be made? All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move we approve the minutes. All right, I got a motion to approve from Commissioner Jensen and a second. I'll second. And a second from Commissioner Newell. Commissioner Proctor, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Newell. Aye. Commissioner Jensen. Aye. I am Chairman Hamilton. I also vote aye. Those pass four to zero. And then next on our agenda, we'll have Mr. Agard come up. We need to decide on our pre-development meetings coming up. So, Mr. Agard. Yeah, we miss you guys. Um, we haven't had a planning commissioner or a pre-development for a while. And I guess the uh, schedule that we had arranged expired. We didn't have anybody set up to come in. So, uh, we, can, we can look at doing that now, or if we can wait till we have more commissioners present until the next meeting, uh, whatever you like, if you want to... Each of you want to volunteer for a month? We can, we can write it down. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay, which month would you like? We, how many do you want to give me? <laughs> want to start off with June? Yeah. May, May and finish off May and do June? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Anybody else? I can do July. I'll do July. May, June, July. You put me down for August. Okay. And then we will, uh, can you handle any of them? Yeah, I can do yeah, September, September, I guess the next one. We'll let the rest of them figure out the other three months. Yeah, come September or maybe next meeting, we'll bring it up for the rest of them. That I works for me. That like works to, for you. To do. Yep. Okay. That way we're covered till then then. Okay, so when, we, when a meeting comes up, we'll let you... We'll let, know, we'll let whoever's month it is know to be there, and we look forward to having your presence there. So thank you. Appreciate that, Mr. Agard. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah, we are adjourned. Thank you, Commissioner Jensen. <laughs>